Unpaid rent is piling up. There's no turning this around because the situation hasn't improved for millions and the only solution is to print more money and increase deficits. As I have documented throughout history, every single time this occurs, it ends badly for the vast majority of the public. Some believe that they can hide behind their purchase of a fully diversified portfolio of seven shares of Amazon. However, this is foolish. What comes out on the other side of any crisis is impossible to predict. Unless, of course, you have a crystal ball. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Look, I want to clarify what I just talked about. If you believe that you can understand what's going to happen in the future, you are a soothsayer. Yes, we can make some pretty good predictions. We have estimates, but we never know for sure. That's why I always say diversify, hedge your bets, get everything in order now, not when the crisis happens because it will be too late by then. We've got to watch what we're doing because nobody's ever going to give you a warning sign. Nobody's ever going to say, hey, by the way, I don't think you should do this right now because something's going to happen tomorrow. You're not going to get that nudge. You're not going to get the tap on the shoulder. So you have to have everything in order before any crisis hits. That's why we all need to smarten up. This right here today, we're going to talk first about the crisis of unpaid rent. It is piling up. The same situation with mortgages. And I know that people have stressed the fact that if you've got a problem right now with the mortgage payments, they can push them to the end. But that's not necessarily a solution. People still owe that money. Yes, it delays the inevitable problem, but I think that we're going to have an issue with a lot of people regardless. Look, the crisis is there and we need to expose what's happening, at least bring some attention to it so that we can be aware of reality. They're still telling you that the unemployment rate is six percent three percent when it's absolutely not that it's crazy anyway we're going to get into some other factors i've got charts to show you i've got a lot of information let's get into it right away unpaid rent is piling up landlords can't hold on forever i think that really is the key because you're seeing a lot of people here who are able to pay their rent business as usual. They're still employed. Maybe they were able to work from home during the period. Maybe they have moved back into the office or not. Maybe they're working from home. Those people generally are not affected. Maybe they don't even have any members of their family that are unemployed. But you have to look at the millions and millions of people who are dealing with the situation. Now, these people here haven't been paying the bills. That puts pressure on the landlords. Some might say, hey, screw the landlords. But you got to understand that place is being paid for by the landlord. If suddenly you're not paying up to the landlord, the landlord can't pay his bill. That means he walks, he sells it for a lower price. They sell it to somebody else. Who knows who's going to come in there next? You're not going to have somebody that's very nice. I'll tell you that much. But somebody may not want to buy up that place. So what are they going to do? They're going to have a very upset landlord. Maybe he walks away, depending on where you are around the world. Sometimes they just walk away from the property. I don't know how it's all going to work with the laws in place. There's eviction moratoriums right now. That's all happening. But there are some certain devastating factors when you start looking at the next level, which is the banks, the financial institutions who have been paying that landlord's uh, loan on there. And that is not going to be something that can last forever as well, because somebody has to continue to pay. So it's the taxpayer really that's footing the bill at this moment and i think that we're going to be dealt with uh, one heavy blow there's no doubt about it Millions of struggling renters caught a much-needed break when the federal moratorium on evictions was extended through the end of March. But for many landlords across the U.S., the news came as a nightmare. Quote, It's important to recognize that after 10 months of severe economic distress, job loss, and decline in rent collections, everyone is hurting. By extending the moratoriums further, it leaves landlords and property managers saddled with the financial burden of providing housing to America's 40 million renters without sufficient resources to do so, and they leave residents to accrue even more debt. So this is just giving you some insight as to what's happening right now. New York City restaurants rush toward reopening with grim 25% math in mind. 
How in the world are you supposed to actually operate a successful business when you're doing so at 25%? In some cases, they were doing 50% capacity. I honestly don't know. Yes, you can do delivery, but is that really a solution? I honestly don't think so. They're putting up these tents everywhere. You can't fit everybody you, you were before inside of a tent, plus the fact you gotta construct that tent. You gotta keep everybody working. Nobody wants to get rid of employees, that's for sure. Any business owner knows what it took to just hire that person, to train that person. There was money, there was investment. Plus, you see that person, depending on the owner, depending on the business, you gotta see that person. This might be a good person, and suddenly, there without a job nobody wants to deal with that and yet for so many this is the the reality of the situation uh, it's, it's truly unfortunate to see it all happening the way it is but there's no industry right now like you know the restaurants the tourism uh, and these other ones that have been hit so hard and so uh, broad i mean you go around looking in europe and looking in, in different places around the world and just seeing it's basically the same thing and the, these industries how they will ever recover or at least you know over a, a few year period i really don't know a lot of the retail locations are going to be empty as a result of so many businesses closing down that's why i stress this point all the time Okay, we have the one factor that's it's affecting real people's jobs. It's affecting people not being able to pay. When they don't pay the rent, then you've got a problem with the, the lenders. you got a problem with the landlords. That's a fact. But if you look at how it spirals out of control, that could create a financial crisis, which then goes on top of all of that. If suddenly there's this unable to pay situation for millions and millions of people, You've got to do something, and I don't think the solutions that the government can provide are actually going to resolve it. That's the problem. Manhattan landlords offer record perks to fill empty apartments. At this point, they have to. They have so many apartments that are empty, they need to get people in them because they're willing to accept anything. At least if they can break even, perhaps, it's better than it being empty, considering the fact that they don't know when this is all going to open up and things are going to go back to normal. Rents tumble 19% in January as listings continue to pile up. Freebies average 2.3 months. So imagine you're the landlord, you got to give two months for free for a lot of people that immediately crushes their profits. This is um, not a good thing, that's for sure. And you could see right here what's been happening. They're getting desperate and they realize this is going to go on for a while. I got to offer people something in hopes that they'll move in. And it has worked somewhat because the uh, actual amount of people moving in did increase. So that is a fact, but we don't know what's going to happen in the medium term here. How many landlords can actually afford to a lot of them were redlining to begin with so you start to drop those rents on top of that giving out free months it's going to hit hard here we have the breakdown for the different programs unemployment insurance state claims and so on and you could see that this has increased over the last few weeks showing you january's numbers there and it just moving up and up now that could be a trend that reverses in february and march and so on we'll see what happens this isn't the first time we've had an increase month over month. But looking at this, it seems to kind of be a trend, at least throughout this year. But it's, this all depends, right? We don't know how that's going to look. And I just want to note it because I think it's important to see what's happening with people. What are they dealing with right now? Are they increasing the amount of debt that they have? Do they find themselves paying the mortgage? Are they able to pay the rent? Or is that not happening at all? And so on. And so this is just more data to take in. And I'll show you what's happening on a national level as well. And you'll see that it's quite insane. This is just showing you the difference between the jobless claims, which has reduced, as you can see, pretty much month over month over these, this period of time. And look at the difference, though. You're seeing the emergency unemployment compensation that has actually rocketed back to a near record high. So that's the discrepancy that we are seeing today. This article here is talking about an unfortunate issue and I just want to bring it up and then move on because this is something I really don't like to talk about, but I think it's it's important to, to mention it. And it's just uh, child poverty is, is the reason um, 
I think it's key to understand. Look, you got more than 16% of US children are now in poverty. 16%. What a number. And this is truly unfortunate because for the most part, this is an avoidable issue. Look at where the money is going. The money, the trillions of dollars that are spent on dropping love, as as I like to say, in an just just you know the the real word even itself is is a trigger word but they dropped this from 30,000 feet up in the sky on places like Yemen and Pakistan and Afghanistan and Iraq and every Syria everywhere else 30,000 feet up in the sky and that's where you get trillions of dollars every single year instead of spending it on your own country that should make everybody sick to their stomach sick to their stomach and upset instead they fight for it they want more of it to me that's even more sick look at this number more than 8 million more than 8 million americans including many children fell into poverty during the second half of last year exacerbating the racial income inequalities that are holding back the u.s economy i just see it time and time again that we are looking at these statistics and nothing ever gets done because it's all about statistics the money gets burned and it gets used to burn people and and that is just it's just horrific Condé Nast withholds 2.4 million dollars in rent at one world trade the publisher wants to cut its square footage as it deals with declining revenue have you heard me talk about that before i know that you have same situation everywhere we had five floors we're going to bring it down to two floors people are going to be working from home half the time they don't need to be in the office anymore this is one of the biggest factors today i'm not going to ramble on about it you know it it's about empty retail locations empty office locations that are simply not going to be needed for a period of time that's going to put pressure on the lenders, on the landlords, and so on. In 2020, you could see right here, left the $25 billion Hudson Yards eerily deserted. The largest private development in U.S. history has attracted marquee companies, but is struggling, struggling with unsold luxury condos and a mall barren of shoppers. This is a problem that extends no matter how far up the ladder you go. You go to the individual landlord on the side of the road, or you go to the tallest buildings the biggest biggest construction projects everybody is being affected by what we're seeing today and they keep telling us spitting in our faces telling us that everything is a-okay that's all for this video if you found that informative hit that thumbs up button when you do you're supporting me i want to thank you for that if you want to learn about e-commerce and you don't want to pay i've got a free course for you completely 100 free it's available at the amazon gps.com if you want to learn about the financial system and explain it very easily for you you can check it out these two books are in the link in the description if you want the audiobook instead the money gps Com. This video right here is one that I did yesterday, and I think that you will find it very informative. It connects in with what we just talked about on so many different levels. Click it, and I'll see you there.